Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. So today I'm going to address a question that's been asked many times, which is really a simple question and people should be able to do it. But because they have such poor training in algebra and mathematics, they don't know these things. So one of the questions asked is the one that you see right in front of you there, which says, is it possible to calculate Q of X comma H for F of X? equals to 1 over x without an infinite process. Yes, of course it is. So remember, from, let's just write down the identity. In fact, let's move this off to the side so that we can have more space here. So let's do this. Let's move that over there. And then write the identity up here. So what does the, the, the Holy Grail identity say? It says f of x plus h, whoops, minus f of x over h, is equal to the slope of the tangent line plus the difference, which is Q of X H. So he's asking how to find Q of X H. Okay, it's this, right? All right, so how do we do that? Well, according, we, we use the, the secant line slope and then we'll find both these slopes. Okay, so the secant line slope Substituting in the function, we have 1 over x plus h minus 1 over x all over h, okay? And if we simplify that further, we get 1 over h times x plus h minus 1 over hx. So what can we do now? We can actually uh, use a common denominator here. So let's do that. Let's say that we have... <clears throat> H, uh, just make sure I'm doing the right thing here, H, X, X plus H, okay. And then this here goes into the denominator, X times, right? So it's X minus, and that goes into there, X plus H. And what you'll have there is minus H over H, X, X plus H. And if you cancel out the H, you'll have minus 1 over H x x plus h okay so now this is the clue to finding q of x h and of course you can do it without an infinite process well all you'll do is you'll divide minus one over x uh over well let's let's write it down like this you'll divide minus one by x squared plus x h okay i just multiplied x in so let's get rid of this now make some space here all right, let's do this now. Get rid of that and get rid of this. Okay, so now what we got to find is a rewrite of this, right? And that's pretty easy. So we just do a long division process, right? So we'll say x squared plus xh divided by minus 1. Okay, and if we want to to divide minus 1 by x squared, it would be minus 1 over x squared, right? Like that, yeah? That would give us minus 1. And if we multiply it by that, we'll have minus h over x. And if we subtract, we'll have h over x. And really, that's all we need to do, right? We don't need an infinite process because by simple division, <clears throat> minus 1, minus 1, divided by x squared plus xh is going to equal to the quotient, this quotient here, minus 1 over x squared, plus this remainder, h over x, all over x squared plus xh, isn't it? Okay, so then that evaluates to minus 1 over x squared uh, plus h over x cubed plus x squared h, right? And that, my friends, is the secret. As soon as you have a term here where you can set h equal to 0, and it will give you 0, then you'll know that this, well, you'll know that this is a derivative. But you'll also know that this is a derivative because it doesn't contain any factor of h. At the same time, you have to make sure 
that if you substitute in this expression here, in this expression here, h equals to zero, it will be zero, okay? So, and, and so guess what? We found, we found q of xh. This is q of xh. It's going to equal to h over x3 plus x squared h. So now you can test this to see if it's true, right? Because this here is actually the slope difference between the derivative, okay, the derivative, and the secant line slope, okay? And the secant line slope, which is uh, 1 over x plus h minus 1 over x all over h, okay? So this q of x h is the difference between this expression and this expression, okay? In other words, if you add minus 1 over x squared to this, you will get this, okay? Does that make sense now? And I hope that that answers your question. So if we go back to the question here, it says, is it possible to calculate q of x q of x comma h for fx without an infinite process? Of course it is. You can calculate it for any particular function. And uh, the, the trick is, if you, if you find it difficult to calculate q of x h, you can always, you can always, and let me clear this again. So let's say new. You can always do this. You can always say, well, uh, from the identity, f of x plus h minus f of x over h equals to f of x plus q of xh. You can always say that q of xh, q of xh is equal to this, okay, minus that. Okay, now you'll notice in uh, the Holy Grail, I write plus or minus. That just depends on whether your your function is uh, concave up or concave down, okay? Because if it's concave down, it could be minus, right? So you have to check that. For example, if you put a tangent line there and you draw a secant like that there, then the slope of the, the tangent line is greater than the slope of the secant line, right? So... <clears throat> those are the considerations that's for, and initially i left it out on purpose because i didn't want to confuse people but it doesn't really matter i mean how you write it if you just write this plus q of x h it's understood that if you have a situation like this then in this case it will be plus right because the secant line slope is greater than the tangent line slope isn't it so those are the considerations and of course i mean if you have it on this side then same story, okay? You have to consider that on this side too, right? All right, so that answers your question, and that's how you can find Q of XH without an infinite process, and how do you know what the t what uh, this here is, what the tangent line, tangent line slope is? Well, it's just the expression that has no H term in it, and uh, you can tell very quickly that if what's left over evaluates to zero if you set h equal to zero because by the way setting h equals to zero is exactly equivalent to taking the limit okay exactly equivalent so you know the bullshit that they tell you that you have to write for example if you have x squared and you're di differentiating it and you write limit of h goes to zero of 2x plus h this this is utter garbage <clears throat> you just set h equals to zero and it's it's legal because this here is the difference you don't care about the difference. If Berkeley knew this, he would have not written uh, a whole scathing critique, but he didn't, and neither did any of the other morons that came after him. And I'm talking about Cauchy and Weierstrass and all the other <clears throat> all the other idiots. Okay, so it was I, the John Great, I, the Great John Gabriel, who revealed these things to you. So that's pretty much it. If you're not already a subscriber, become one. Tell your friends about it, okay? Contribute some money if, you, if you're able. And the links are there. So if you go to the link and you go to 
any one of the content sections. I don't know why I did that. I could have gone straight to content. So if you go over here and you go into the video, come on, you'll see there's a donation link here. See, it's probably better if you pay me at this link because then I don't pay commission. So there is a GoFundMe, but they take money off the donation. It's a certain percentage. And then also, uh, in case YouTube shuts down my channel, which they've done before, by the way, all my videos are backed up to this link here. I have to tell you that, odyssey.com. And if you're really interested in learning a lot more stuff, you can join, try to join on Discord. We don't just allow anybody to join the new calculus uh, Discord. This is a new calculus Discord, but you'll find many brilliant uh, uh, pieces of juicy pieces of knowledge, which you won't find anywhere else. So here's a proof of square root two using a geometric method, for example. Um, you'll also find, and and you only see this in questions or lobby because to be to access any of the other channels, you have to be a member, and to be a member, you need to take a ten question test and get all ten right. Of course, if the dean decides you're sincere and you get eight or nine out of 10, he might allow you to get in that way, but you can take the test as many times as you like. And you're told what materials you need to study in order to get in. So this is, th th there, are, there are several reasons for this. We want to prevent trolls because there are a lot of trolls out there and I don't have time to deal with idiots. And most people who comment on my channel are idiots. So that's the reason we have that. And finally, become a member uh, become a follower on Academia. Okay, this is the Academia channel. You'll find on this channel many useful articles. Okay, so let's go there. You'll find many useful articles, some videos, and also a book. So there's one book. Actually, there are three books, but the others are listed as articles. So uh, seven videos, 254 papers, and one book. And if you become a follower, you'll get a a notification every time I write a new article, okay? Which, by the way, I do know better than anybody else, so you'll learn a lot more from me than you'll learn from your idiot professors in the mainstream or your mathematics teachers. Very well then, my name is John Gabriel. This is the New Calculus Channel. Till next time, goodbye.